now, my friend, to encounter the real Jesus. The Lord gave me a scripture, and I will share that with you. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. This is Proverbs 10, 22. Today, Jesus is here to teach us how to unlock our blessings. Come on. Christmas is around the corner, and God doesn't want you broke. He wants to bless you, and today, he is here to teach us, and I hope you invite all your friends because it's going to be a powerful teaching today. My friend, do you know the real Jesus who laid down his life for you, loves no matter your race, gender, or past sin? Do you know the Father who protects, the shepherd who guides, Jesus who carries you through trials, catches your tears, cries with you, and laughs with you? Welcome to Encounter the Real Jesus. You will never be the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah, my friend. As I told you, God is going to teach us on how to unlock God's blessings in our lives. You know, God wants you blessed. So this past week, I went through some situations through which actually God used to teach me how to live and to work in my blessings. It's not often a time that I get really stressed, but this particular week, I was really having issues, you know, we have churches overseas, and we have the TV ministry, and I am worried about all these bills that are piling up. And all of a sudden, uh, a personal friend of mine, whom I had sent money like two days before, he sent me a message saying, I am sorry. My brother just died. And you know, this is from a country where there is a persecution. Uh, the brother was killed. And I have my day, he said, I have my day, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have any money to bury. So I did not respond to the message because I said, you know what, you're talking to the wrong person. Right now, I am also focused on those bills. Well, after I received that message, our pastor also from the Philippines, they text me, they say, Pastor, we are trusting God. We only have money to live on for one week, just enough money to buy food. I said, God, what do we do? I went in a prayer, and I prayed, and I prayed. Then after I finished to pray, the Lord told me, I want you to go and take all the little money you have left, send it to Africa so that this pastor is able to take care of the funeral and take care of uh, his church. It was a, a concern for me, but you know, one thing I have learned as a pastor, as a believer, is that when you obey God, everything will be fine. So I went ahead, sent the money very quickly, the little money I had left, and after that, the Lord takes me to 1 Kings 17. And that's where we are going to read our text today. 1 Kings 17, 9 through 12. It's the time of Elijah. Uh, let's begin with verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded the widow there to provide for you. Verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, 
please get me a little water in a jar that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have no bread, only a handful of flour in the bowl and a little oil in the jar. And behold, I'm gathering a few sticks that I may go in and prepare for me and my son that we may eat and die. This is the story of a man of God, a mighty prophet of God who is being persecuted. And God tells him for us to move and stay by the brook of Jordan. When he is there, God miraculously provide for him using the ravens which were bringing him a bread and meat in the morning and in the evening. God is able to provide for us supernaturally if he needs to, he will do it. Now, the reason why Elijah fled is because there was a persecution Jezebel wanted to kill him and kill all the prophets. And uh, Elijah had prophesied that there is going to be a famine in the land. And the word of God came to pass and people began to die. That's why we see these widows saying, I have only a little bit left. Me and my son, we are just going to eat that and probably die. Wait a minute. God has his prophet. He does not send him without provision. God will always provide for you. When God wants to provide for this man of God, he does not pick a king to provide for him. He does not pick the richest man in a town. He finds a poor widow who is hungry, who does not have much, because God is about to answer her prayer. She has a little bit of oil and the flour left. Yet God comes and he says to her, you are the one I have chosen to bless. I am going to answer your prayer. I am going to open the windows of heaven for you. But this is what you need to do. In order for me to give you something, you are going to let go of what you have. And it is in this way we see in verse 13, Elijah said to him, Do not fear. Go, do as you have said, but make me a little bread uh, from it first and bring it out to me. And afterwards, you may make one for yourself and for your son. God wants to provide for you, but you are looking at your bank account. You say, God, I don't have much. But God wants you to give the little, to let go of the little you have so that he may give you more. Often a time when God comes and tells you, give, it's because he wants to bless you. It's because he wants to unlock the blessing he has for you. And often a time, the response is a fear. Oh, no, I can't do that. That's the only thing left. However, when you give that little thing you have left, you are showing God that you love him. You are showing God that you have faith. Today, God is going to bless you. He wants to give each one of us a Christmas present. But will you let go the little you have? My friend, I encourage you, get on the phone. We want to pray for God to bless you. 
And so anyone who call and by faith, you let go of the little blessings that you have. You watch what God is going to read for you, which we are going to read after the break. Don't go anywhere because I want to finish my testimony of what happened when I gave my little money that I had in my account. Thank you. We are in the age of the Holy Spirit. The power of God is unlimited. The anointing that breaks the yoke rests upon our ministry. People are encountering the real Jesus in our services. Those who are depressed and oppressed are receiving deliverance and healing. Sinners are turning back to God. Together, we are experiencing a great move of God. The Lord spoke to us, my children, take my message out to the people faster than the eagle soars and faster than the gazelle runs. Donate today and be part of the team that gets things done. Together, let's slam the gates of hell. Together, let's bring God's kingdom to every home. Send your gift to Blazing Holy Fire, 10940 South Parker Road, number 785, Parker, Colorado, 80134-7440. Or give online at theblazingholyfire.com forward slash donate. Jireh, God who provide for us. He is here today and I feel the anointing of God to bless those who will step by faith and send a gift to our ministry. You know, in, uh, before we take the break, I was sharing with you how God told me to give the little I had in my personal bank account to the pastor in Africa. You know, at first when God said, I said back, Lord, you know, I have helped this pastor maybe over 40 times. The last time I had helped him, I told him, listen, my brother, the situation is really not looking very good everywhere. There are problems everywhere right now. From now on, please take it to the Lord. I don't have any more to bless you with. But God tells me, give. Well, at the same time, God goes to our ministry in the Philippines. He talked to the pastor. He said, I know you only have money to live on for a week, but watch me do wonders for you. Where in the Philippines, when they were thinking about, okay, what do we do? How do we survive? They heard a knock at the door. A pastor friend came and he said, I'm about to be evicted. I don't have the money to pay rent. So they thought about it. They said, you know what? We have saved this money, but it's not even enough. So they decided to take all the money they had to live on for a week. Only the money they had left to buy food, they gave it to the person who is about to be evicted. Do you want to know what happened to me? Do you want to know what happened in the Philippines? <laughs> oh, God is good. If only we could listen and obey. So our pastor in the Philippines, they took all the money, they gave it away. Two days later, it's a Saturday. 
a missionary, an American missionary who lives in Brazil, uh, she calls them and she says, I don't know the situation there, but God has told me to give you $500. Woo! You know, $500 in the Philippines, it's a lot of money. They can live on that money for months. I was uh, told that with six hundred dollars, six hundred to a thousand dollars, you can build a brand new church. And the next day, there is a company they had worked for, and they had not paid the money, and they had forgotten about the job of they did for that company. The company calls them and they say, "Hey, we have wired the money for you. We have sent that money." And uh, the third day in the Philippines, someone from the U.S. blessed them with $400. And I can go on and on. But everything happened so quick that the pastor in the Philippines had to call me and say, Pastor, this is how we received our blessings, by giving away the little we had. Well, for me, it's a very hard to even go through the number because after I gave all that money, I knew a miracle has to take place. Otherwise, I would not be here on this TV show talking to you. The moment I let go, a day passed by, it's very quiet, but I feel the peace of God. And I have this expectancy because I know, anyways, there has to be a miracle. Within that time, uh, within a week, it's been a week, and I have had probably over 15 people giving into our ministry, giving and sowing into me personally. And these are the people that I did not even think they were going to do that. So today, God is letting you on into his secret. When you hear the voice of God telling you, give, I want you to reach out to the phone and call us. The devil is not going to tell you to give it to encounter the real Jesus. The devil is not going to tell you to give it to your church. No, no, no. When you hear the voice telling you, go give, go give. You see how this ministry helps you. You know how your church helps you. When you hear the voice telling you, go give, obey. That's what the widow did. In the book of 1 Kings 17, verse 14, Elijah says, for that says the Lord, the God of Israel, the bowl of a flower shall not be exhausted, nor shall the jar of oil be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. So she went and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household Ate for many days. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Elijah. Do you see the uh, immediate obedience of this widow? She did not know Elijah. Many times we come to you, but you know us. But she did not even know. All she knew, she could feel the presence of God. She could tell this man is a man of God. She could tell that she must obey because God is about to do something. And you see the miracle taking place? The windows of heaven opened and she was provided without end. There are people who are watching today. 
and you need a miracle. You've been doing this and that, nothing works. But you want God to bless you. In order for things to happen for you, you need to let go. I can see some of you, you have been barely able to pay your bills. There is luck, there is not just enough. And you have been sowing here and there. You seem to get something, but there is no big breakthrough. Do you know why? Because you need to give the last you have. God never asks you to give without blessing you. And so I know your blessings are on the way. We're going to take a break. But please do not forget to call us because we want to pray for anyone who will give the best offering on our program today. Unto the Lamb in the midst of the throne, the beautiful Lamb in the midst of the throne, the worthy Lamb, the glorious man, slain. I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written on the inside and out, sealed with seven seals. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to take the scroll and loose its seals. Unto the land in the midst of the throne, the beautiful land in the midst of the throne, the worthy land, the glorious man slain. And there was no one in heaven or on the earth or underneath, no one was found. his presence, you feel his anointing, the anointing breaks the yoke, and today we're going to pray. The Lord is showing me, he's going to break the spirit of fear over your life. And also the Lord is going to destroy the curses that follow people so that there is never enough. The Lord we bless you because he promised that he will bless those who obey. But you might say, Pastor, I do not have so much to give. It's not how much. In fact, if you look in the Bible, there are times the Lord has praised a widow who gave it two cents, like somebody who gave the most. And now we see the widow being chosen to provide for the man of God. So this is to tell you, for God to do a miracle, he does not need so much. All he needs is a channel. He wants you to become a channel that will bless your entire neighborhood. He wants to use you as a channel that will bless your church, your family. He wants you to be a channel through which he can distribute maybe the Christmas gifts. All we have to do today is to have the faith like that of the widow and let go 
and God will bless. We pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that the spirit of fear is defeated over your life. The fear to let go is there to rob you of God's blessings. Right now, we break the spirit of poverty. It cannot stay. And you will let it go. And you will give when you hear the voice of God to give today. Do not miss your heavenly blessings. The Lord is talking to you. Please pick the phone. You might be calling to give maybe $5. But there are those people who God will say, I want you to give a hundred. Whatever the Lord tells you, rise up and do it. And my friend, I can see his blessing coming upon your life. World Watch Monitor tells us that in 2018, more than 8,000 churches were closed in Rwanda following the government directive. A Christian nation was turned secular overnight. As a survivor of the Rwanda and DRC Congo genocides, wars and dictatorships, Reverend Christine Coleman shares her story in SOS, Rwanda's 30-year apocalypse, sounding the alarm to reveal the reality of ongoing persecution, martyrdoms, and killings, yet hidden to most of the outside world. It is a world of dictatorship, great deception, persecution, war against the saints and people of good faith that has seen the martyrdom of three bishops and nine priests in one day, and the recent martyrdom of Kizito Mihigo, the most prominent Rwandan artist and gospel singer. If nothing is done, what is happening in Rwanda can happen anywhere in the West. This is a must-read book to understand the workings of Antichrist spirits, ideology, and philosophy. Get your copy today. The Real Jesus is brought to you by Christine Coleman and Blazing Holy Fire Church for healing, deliverance, and intimacy with God. Join our Sunday 7 p.m. revival services, 9250 East Bellevue Avenue, Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. For mobile giving, text GIVE to 720-586-4390. Visit theblazingholyfire.com for more options. Till next time, Jesus says, smile.